Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming along this session. So my name is Muhammad Ali, and I'm research data specialist in data architecture at AIDC. Um, so today I will be presenting about uh, the data architecture checklist that we have developed recently, and I will be particularly focusing on the role of data, role of data quality in this data architecture checklist. So I will start by acknowledgement of the country. Um, so um, we acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet, and I pay my respect to the past, present, and emerging. So this is the content for today's presentation. I will start with some of the concepts of data architecture and the relevant engineering behind it. And then I will walk through uh, how data quality can help improving the existing data architectures. And then I have included a practical scenario where I have added the both concepts of data quality and the data architecture. And following that, I will walk through the data architecture checklist. Um, and I will also discuss some of the common challenges uh, challenges and existing um, obstacles in this domain, actually. And following these challenges, uh, we have proposed some solutions that how we can improve um, the existing architectures and workflows. And since nowadays there are a lot of discussions around AI and ML, so I have also included how AI and ML can part its role in enhancing the data quality in, in the data architecture. Um, following that, um, I will discuss the future perspective of what next from here. And then at last, I will define some of the key takeaways and conclusions from this presentation. Uh, so this is the first slide, which uh, shows um, high-level architecture diagram. So in data architecture, what it defines is data architecture basically defines the data strategy and data flows within the organization. So it basically consists of five layers. Um, so it starts from the data collection, then from data processing, um, and then transformation and how the data is stored. So, and at the end, we usually discussed how the data is used and analyzed in terms of analytics. So in this figure, we can, uh, we can see that the first step is started from the data collection and acquisition. Then there are some kind of processing um, following by some kind of transformations um, and then storage in different databases. Um, and then lastly, I have highlighted some kind of analytics in terms of um, visualizations and data science um, driven decisions. Um, I have also included uh, ML ops in this data architecture diagram because nowadays there are a lot of discussions around um, deployment from the conceptualization. So ML ops basically help us to convert the um, concepts into a kind of real time and uh, deployment and production. Um, so following this data architecture diagram, so, so these are some of the data quality metrics that are that usually embed in data architecture. So some of the terms are quite common. Um, let's say uh, there are there is a term of completeness, accuracy, consistency, um, timeliness, validity, uniqueness, and relevancy. These terms are quite common. Um, across different domains, but today we will be describing specifically um, in terms of data architecture. So when we describe these terms in terms of data architecture, let's say if you start with the completeness, uh, we usually talk about the data pipeline. So in that data architecture, data pipelines basically ensures that all the data is captured um, and um, into the required formats and into the required systems. And in terms of accuracy, we usually check that in the data architecture, um, all the data sets are within the uh, relevant formats and they are in the consistent formats. Um, and um, there is a concept of data profiling that we usually consider to um, identify missing points and to ensure that the accuracy is in place in the, in the architecture. When we talk about the consistency, which is the third one in this list, we usually talk about the data models. Um, so data architects usually work on data models to keep this data consistent across different systems. Um, so that um, this is also relevant to the data integration, which is a kind of pain point for uh, different domains or different systems nowadays. Um, and in terms of timeliness, um, so, 
I mentioned this point because this is somehow also relevant to pipelines, which, which we are also called as ELT or ETL pipelines. So we usually use these pipelines in data architecture so that we can reduce the manual processes um, because most of the processes nowadays are manual. So by using these ELT or ETL processes, we can automate the processes and we can save the time. Um, so in terms of validity, so let's say in terms of data quality, we usually define some kind of rules and constraints just to ensure that the data is maintained um, and the data is properly validated and updated um, accordingly. One of the things that uh, that has been um, just has been coming to my mind was like in terms of uniqueness. So when we usually work around the data models, uh, we usually define different kind of relationships. And within each of each component or each record of the data set, we usually prefer to have some kind of unique identifiers. And um, so the purpose of just like mentioning unique identifiers is to avoid duplication actually. Nowadays we have, uh, we are dealing around a lot of data sets, but duplication is one of the, um, key problem. So to avoid this problem, we usually um, assign a unique uh, identifiers across different data sets of the um, architect within the, that architecture. Now, how this is relevant to the organizations, basically, um, is from data architecture perspective, we work around with different organizations or different data consumers. Firstly, to understand um, what are their needs. So today we are specifically focusing on the data quality. So uh, so, so I will be focusing on what, what we need to understand about the data quality needs at first step and how we can ensure that the relevant steps in the data architecture are meeting their specific use cases. So these are some of the um, metrics, but these metrics, uh, the names of these metrics are quite common, but uh, in terms of uh, data architecture, we usually take these kind of steps. Um, Actually. Um, so now we talked about the metrics. Actually, this is some of the practical Im implementation. Um, and this is from one of the research groups, which is known as the InfoTech. Um, so in this diagram, basically, um, it shows that there are four or five, five key components of the data uh, architecture, which starts from the data creation and then data ingestion and then ends with the reporting and analytics. Um, so in terms of data quality, there are different data checks across these um, layers, actually. Uh, for example, if we see at the first one, we have the databases. So if, when we work around the databases, we, we ensure that the database has, um, the database is free from the errors. And if we come towards the data ingestion, we usually check the different kind of syntax and formats so that the data is like ingested in appropriate manner. Um, and the third step is like the database or data warehouses. And nowadays there is a concept of data lake houses where we actually capture and store the data. So data warehouses and data lake houses itself actually, they themselves actually um, uh, maintain the data quality by uh, working around different kind of data pipelines that they have built in. Um, so in and, and the last, we can also see that how in this data architecture, what how we have ingested the different kind of data quality checks to ensure that the data is quality, data is properly collected, then ingested, then properly stored and delivered, and then um, consumed uh, as the last step. Um, so one and two, as I have shown in the lesions, um, one basically shows how each component in this diagram is attempting to fix the data quality issue, especially at the root cost level. So when we mention about the root cost level, it starts from basically the ingestion from the databases. So that is the first step. And, and throughout this data flow, actually, we actually uh, usually assign different kind of checkpoints to ensure that uh, we have a good data quality output at the end. Um, so these are some of the common challenges and obstacles. Um, they is quite repetitive nowadays. Let's say um, uh, organizations are facing that um, in terms of data quality, we have unreliable data and which, which leads to um, unreliable outputs actually. And then there are um, in, in, uh, inefficiencies in the data sets and to fix those inefficiencies, we, we have different kind of costs associated with it. And cost is uh, another factor that is like a challenge for, the, for fixing data quality issues in these data architectures. Now, what is the impact of um, 
poor data quality it's based because it's, it's the, it, it has a domino effect. So if the first step of the data ingestion is not handled properly, it basically leads to the wrong outcomes or the wrong decision makings at the end of the uh, process in the start architectures. Um, and one of the other obstacles that um, uh, we have, or I have noticed is like that um, nowadays, uh, there's a failure to realize the importance of data quality. So we usually do not give much importance to this concept that um, data quality is like one of the important parts of these data architectures, but they are often ignored um, uh, nowadays. Um, and also I think we are not, usually we are unsure about where to start with the data quality. So this uncertainty also poses a challenges to the data architects that from what step we have to start because within all these um, layers in the data architecture, there are different layers and each layer we, we come across the different kinds of data sets and how to start in terms of lineage is also a problem. Um, so. We also come across this word of data silos nowadays, actually this is most repetitive word um, in data domain and the challenge in terms of data quality and data architecture is that the data is like basically um, stored in different isolated systems, other departments and which makes it difficult to ensure that uh, the data is consistent and have a quality uh, or to maintain quality across the organization. Now this kind of data silos also leads to uh, to the lack of integration, uh, data integration between the systems and the lack of integration uh, actually results into in inconsistent data definitions. And, um, and of course it leads to uh, inconsistent uh, quality standards. So these are some of the um, challenges and co uh, common obstacles that have been listed here. So as a potential solution, I have listed um, a table here. Um, these are uh, a kind of very generic and basic solutions which can solve the existing problems. For, let's say um, within these archi data architectures, what we usually do is let's say, as I shown in the previous diagram, uh, we usually implement data quality checks at every stage of the architecture. Um, let's say uh, when we talk about the different layers, um, there are different stages of pipelines in these data architectures. For example, that pipelines basically handles uh, how we have ingested the data, how we have transformed the data, how the data is integrated and how the data is delivered. So by point, by positioning the data quality checks at the different steps of the each layer, we can control um, or we can improve the data quality aspects in, in the data architecture. And uh, apart from that, um, we can also improve the data quality by improving the, um, uh, the results that we can usually collect from the data quality checks. Let's say we usually um, set some kind of thresholds or rules, which says this is pass or fail status. So these kind of um, messages are uh, different quality scores can also help us to uh, analyze the state and performance of the data quality in the data architecture. And uh, um, yeah, and, and, and there are some other aspects that I have um, actually um, uh, listed here. So one of the thing is in terms of visualizations also. So and instead of manually going through individual component of the uh, data, we usually nowadays uh, work around the dashboards or different tools or charts, which basically shows the different kind of forecastings and data quality trends to ensure that where, where are the anomalies and where are the data um, uh, issues actually exist. So data, ex data visualizations are also one of the important uh, roles uh, to maintain a good data quality in these data architectures actually. And the last one, I think is, uh, it's a kind of uh, collaboration between the different teams. Let's say um, data architects usually work with the data engineers and data analysts, data analysts and data scientists within the organization so that they can effectively communicate about the data quality issues and um, work on the um, work on the existing challenges or the workflows actually. So I, I have uh, to support pre previous statements. I have added an example of an organization and that how data quality is like affecting the data architecture. Um, so the example is, let's say uh, if uh, organization, if there is an organization uh, which is like trying to migrate their data from one platform to the other platform, 
Um, so after the migration, actually, they realized that the migration that they have done actually produced some kind of inconsistent results. And those inconsistent results were actually from the uh, data quality issues, which were ignored at the first step. Um, so what, what actually has gone wrong in this scenario is like that um, while migration from one platform to the other or from one domain to the other, um, it is necessary that time should be spent on identifying the quality, data quality issues. Um, and, um, and the other problem that we usually face nowadays is there are a lot of manual processes to fix the data quality issues. And this manual processes usually leads to the high extension of delivery of time. Um, and now to address these issues, let's say within this organization, what they usually do is they go back again um, in, include some additional resources and inclusion of additional resources basically um, also increase the financial burdens and also the associated cost with it. And when we talk about the data quality, let's say in this example, if there are um, if there are inconsistent results from one platform to the other, then it also initiates um, mistrust or the issue of the trust in the, um, in the let's say in the new system, if the um, results are not um, up to the mark or what, what it usually supposed to um, appear uh, in the next plat platform actually. Uh, now, if that is the issue, then there are certain solutions also. Let's say this is another diagram, um, which I have listed here. Um, it, this diagram is simple one, which shows how, what are the data resources um, and um, how, and what are the other staging areas which can improve the data quality um, issues uh, in the, uh, let's say for in the previous example from migration from one platform to the other and within the complete data architecture. So the step one, let's say from the data um, data resources and, and the second step, which is from moving the data from data sources to the staging area, we have actually, um, we usually let's say maintain different kind of checklists to ensure that the data which has been coming from the actual source have some kind of, uh, it's, it's free from the data quality issues. Now in this staging area, um, we, uh, in the data architectures, we usually have a data pipelines and within these data pipelines, we usually in, in just different kind of checklists. Let's say this is one of the um, checklists, which is let's say in terms of operational checklist that how the data is operating. Um, so these are, there are the five steps, which ensures that the data, which is coming as a raw form should have uh, free from errors, or uh, that data is free from her errors by following these five steps. Now, when it when it goes through from staging area to the data warehouse, we usually uh, what we usually checks is like whether whether it meets the business requirements, whether it is consistent with the um, business needs. So these are the other uh, che checks that we usually implement within these data architectures to ensure that um, the data quality, the integrity, and data quality is maintained uh, within these um, data architectures. Um, so I, I listed this because we, there's, there is a lot of discussions around um, data within the data, which is metadata. So what could be the role of metadata quality in the data uh, architecture actually? So how do, uh, metadata actually um, quality usually impacts uh, the uh, real time implementation of data architectures. So I listed uh, five of them, but they're not limited to, there could be much more than this one, but some of them is like, we usually talk a lot about nowadays fair and one of the component of the fair is discovery so what usually met metadata usually help is like the high quality metadata actually ensures that the relevant data could be easily find within the data architecture and um, and in terms of lineage tracking so uh, metadata can ensure that it, the data can be properly tracked uh, from its origin from to from from various steps such as transformations and the movement throughout the organization. And, um, and in terms of integration, um, uh, good metadata quality is actually um, important for uh, successful data integration because when systems and applications um, use consistent and accurate metadata, it becomes easier to integrate data from various resources. Uh, so in terms of data consistency, I usually mention here that um, 
consistent and standardized metadata access within the data architecture ensures that um, different uh, platforms or different organizations are using the same data language uh, to maintain the consistency across different systems. Um, it also supports the data governance and compliance because metadata is one of the foundations for effective governance. It basically helps um, to set the policies or to enforce the different data management policies um, actually in that architecture. Now, I have given the, a bit of overview of how data quality is important for the data architecture. Now, we can, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this phase, I will highlight how we can ensure good practices of data architecture and data quality. And for that, actually, we have actually developed a checklist. Um, which is currently available on the uh, ARDC website. Um, so what we have um, focused in this uh, checklist actually is that um, uh, we actually uh, compiled different components of data architecture. Um, so in this checklist, we focused on the 17 areas, which I will highlight in, in the coming slide. Um, now, what is the benefit for the end users from this checklist is that after using this checklist, actually uh, organizations can be have a better understanding of where their, where their data architecture is at and uh, what areas they need to follow up on. Uh, one of the thing I, uh, I think I should mention uh, is like that the, this checklist is like uh, is intended to be used as a starting point for teams or for the organizations to uh, customize. And all the items in this checklist, um, it's, it's not necessary that they would be applicable to all organizations. And it's likely that organizations will um, need to add, revise, or remove the item based on their um, requirements. But this checklist basically in, aims to ensure that there are certain elements which needs to be embedded in, in the data architecture practices. And this checklist will initiate um, further discussions and reflections on how we can improve the existing data, uh, data architectures. So this is the data, one of the snapshot from the uh, data architecture checklist. So these are the 17 areas which are shown in the bullets. Um, uh, we started from the questions around existing architecture, then we, um, gone down into the data sources, data formats, and uh, data types, and uh, data integration and transformation and techniques, and um, how data pipelines and workflows can reduce the existing manual works. And, um, and then there is a long list of uh, components that we have listed here. Uh, so this checklist is currently available on Zenodo. Um, I have added URL in this um, presentation actually. One of the component that we have focused in this checklist is that um, the first bullet that is shown in, in this slide is basically a core list of data architecture, but within this data architecture, there are three other cross capabilities. Let's say um, in data architecture, we also, uh, our team, let's say we have a team of data governance, sensitive data and fair principles. And these three areas are also come across the different and components of the data architecture. So I will walk through uh, the, each component of data architecture checklist in the coming slide. So this is the first one. So as I mentioned previously, that these are the different components. Let's say if we started from the existing architecture. So this checklist ensures that, let's say, do you have an existing data architecture in your organization? If, if you have, then what are the problems? If the data architecture is outdated, um, redundant or it's not uh, properly aligned with the business requirements if uh, and what are the current needs so we actually for started by focusing on the data uh, existing data architectures and then um, going into more details of data resources let's say from where the data is coming from how the data is collected um, are there any devices which have been used use of, uh, during the data collection um, um, are, are there any social media so there are different uh, resources that we have focused on here um, and um, and in terms of data formats let's say um, uh, we actually highlighted what kind of formats are you are you being just like using in your data architecture um, and also we have highlighted some kind of metadata schemas uh, within that um, in, in this check uh, check checklist actually um, nowadays because there is it's it's uh, nowadays we are 
in the age of big data. So when we talk about the big data, there is data is usually clustered into three types, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. So we also included this component to ensure that what kind of data types that um, your organization is using. Um, now, in terms of transformation techniques, uh, how the data is like moved from one place to another, just to make it for analysis ready. Um, uh, let's say, have you used some kind of existing techniques such as ETL processes or ELT processes to clean and organize your data? Um, and then uh, we also included the uh, effect of pipelines and workflows um, just to reduce the manual steps we usually do in data transformations. And uh, in the data ingestion, because uh, there are two kinds of uh, data which is basically ingested into different kinds of systems. One is the base streaming and the other is the real-time streaming. So it's important to design the architecture based on how the data is coming into your system. So um, whether you are using the base streaming or whether you are using the, using the real-time streaming um, for, your, for your objectives actually. So if you are using um, both base streaming and real-time streaming, and then there is a concept of Lambda architecture, which is the best suited for, for the um, data architectures. Um, we also included the component of data storage, although AIDC is not providing storage at this time, but um, we focused typically um, based on the repositories or the data warehouses, let's say whether your data is stored on premise, uh, whether it is in cloud or uh, whether your data exists both in on premise and cloud in hybrid situation. Um, one of the key aspect in data architectures is databases. So let's say we have different databases and these databases are usually um, do, is, are dependent on the data types, whether the data is based on the tables or whether the data is based on the different kind of documents. So that will decide whether it's relational or no relational in terms of databases. So in the third uh, one, we actually focused on the data quality aspect and um, which, is, uh, which is quite aligned with this presentation also. Um, uh, let's say what are the key steps that have been taken to ensure that the data quality is maintained across the data architecture. Let's say uh, one of the technique could be the data profiling. Um, and there are some other techniques and uh, which have been discussed in the previous slides, let's say automating the data pipelines to ensure that the data is free from the errors. Um, so in terms of data validation, um, when the data is like has been presented in the last stage, it is important to ensure that the data is like free from any inconsistency so that the data that has been used in the last stage for decision-making should have um, should have a clean and proper and appropriate data. Um, so when we talk about the data decisions, it's because uh, we talk a lot about the ML and AI. So for even for ML and AI, they are heavily dependent on the incoming data. So it's also important to maintain the data quality for these AI and ML solutions. Um, and in the last, sorry, and in the last we have, um, uh, visualizations uh, part. Um, let's say nowadays organizations are using business intelligent tools um, such as um, uh, Power BI and other tools to visualize their big data and to get real time alerts and predictions of their data sets actually. These are the cross capabilities um, um, that usually data architects work with the other members of the team. Let's say uh, data governance. Um, um, let's say is the governance is in place in the architecture for that we have uh, a, a more details on data governance in our website um, and our data governance specialists have uh, actually designed those checklists to ensure that the data governance uh, policies are in place actually and we have also a teams on the sensitive data um, so when we talk about the data in the data architecture we come across also across the sensitive data so for sensitive data in ARDC we also develop a guidelines around how we can work around the sensitive data and how it can be useful for the data architectures um, when we work around the 
data data quality in the um, data architecture, then we also ensure that the data is like uh, data follows the fair principles. So to understand how how the fair principles are relevant to this component, um, again we have a fair principles document in the RDC websites, which can be easily accessed by actually easy anyone. And the I have also included the hyperlinks in this slide. So, uh, so that was the checklist. So within after that checklist, actually, what we realized is that when we talk about the architecture, um, we mix different kind of technologies within those architectures because uh, there are different kind of uh, architectures. Let's say this figure shows uh, seven to eight different kind of architectures, and each each architecture has a different kind of role and responsibility. Uh, I have listed, let's say, from data architecture, what usually they look after, um, what systems architectures they usually look after, what is the role of infrastructure architecture, enterprise architecture. So what is the role of ml and ai architecture so i have listed this figure just to make uh to for clarify that um that what wha how we can select the right architecture based on the needs and um more details can be uh can be found at the adc website actually now in terms of solutions how we can improve these data architectures and data quality and data workflows so we have actually listed a couple of steps here because a data architecture needs to keep pace with the technological changes. Um, so these are some of the recommendations to improve um, the data architecture along with the data quality. Let's say the first step is the, um, we have to assess the current state of the architecture. And in terms of data quality, we need to understand what are the requirements of data quality and we have to uh, apply or design the data architecture accordingly. And in terms of existing architecture, we need to, understand that in which areas we need further improvements and how we can design different strategies and workflows so that the data architecture can be uh, improved based on the current um, requirements at the current stages. So there is also a concept of a gap analysis where we actually draw a comparison between the current state of the architecture and the future state of the architecture. And within this gap analysis, we also focus on the data quality aspect. And this is one of the important aspects in the data architecture that what is the existing situation or what is the existing state of the data quality and how we can improve this data quality aspect in the future state of the architecture and i think a proper planning and road maybe is also improve uh, important uh, to um, optimize or to improve the existing data architectures um uh, and a proper planning and a workflow is also i think is also important to keep the data architecture up to date um, and I think uh, one of the other things that um, that has been coming into into discussions was like um, we need to promote collaboration between different uh, between the different members of the data. Actually, if if we foster data driven culture, we can better handle. Um, the existing issues, because as I mentioned in the previous uh, slides, that nowadays most of the organizations are working as a silo. So if you if you promote collaboration between different data teams, then we can handle these data issues within the data architecture more effectively. Uh, so um, there are a lot of discussions around how we can use AI and ML for improving data quality in the data architecture. So these are some of the components that I have listed here. So let's say, um, AI can help us in uh, automating the data cleansing and standardization. And we usually do this by automat automatically impute the missing values, rectify the inconsistencies and bringing the different standardized formats across the architecture. Um, and, um, and in terms of anomaly detection, we usually use in machine learning and AI, we use supervised and unsupervised learning. So um, this is important because um, if, if an organization is working on a big data, let's say beta, beta bytes uh, are a big data, manual processes will usually not work. So by ingesting the AI and ML solutions and by uh, doing some kind of feature engineering, um, these errors of data quality can be easily identified and rectified. Um, so yeah, so the rest of the ones are like um, how we can improve the um, data quality monitoring. Let's say we can improve by in, in, inter, uh, ingesting the predictive models and um, ingesting the data lineage tracking. And nowadays, um, 
data lineage tracking is usually um, being done by uh, using the historical activities of the data and um, usually AI data science or ML uh, uh, use different kind of feature engineering to detect what were the historical trends and how we can uh, track these changes uh, for the um, uh, future. And um, I think one of the important aspects is like uh, democratizing the data quality. Let's say AI can help us to um, do this by promoting different kind of data quality um, dashboards, which could be visible to different members of the team. Uh, now, how, what could be the, how a modern data architecture would be, um, look like, and what could be the key features that we have to focus on? These are some of them. Uh, it's not necessary that all these will applicable to the different organizations, but these are some of the um, key items that we have found that these could be um, the key features in the modern data architectures. And one of them is the scalability. Um, um, and the other one is the reusability because nowadays there are a lot of data pipelines, but they are not reusable. Um, so by introducing scalable and reusable data pipelines, we can combine different kinds of intelligent workflows and these workflows can help us to improve the data quality issues. And the second one is in terms of data integration, because nowadays, um, let's say from ARDC, um, where the data is like, let's say it's coming from different or from various uh, sources, um, it's important to have a seamless data integration, let's say by ingesting ELT processes or considering um, other um, approaches such as data pipelines and even driven architectures for efficient data integration. Um, now, there we discussed in the previous slides that how it's important to convert the manual data flows into uh, data flows automation. This is because to reduce the manual data processing and analysis. And um, in terms of technologies, machine learning can help us uh, to automate these processes actually. Let's say one of the use cases is mach machine learning ops where we use different kind of um, uh, workflows and pipelines to um, automate um, these pipelines um, and um, and reduce the human uh, processes or human labor works. Um, so, um, so it's also important to consider um, the batch and real time processing requirements because some of the data, just like are in terms of um, batch coming comes in terms of batches that they, they are they're like not comes on on frequent basis but some of them are real time let's say in terms of iot devices most of most of the iot devices they actually um release data in real time so it's important to consider uh, the requirements for batch and real time processing um, so one of the enterprise, enterprise architect, uh, his name is Charlie Reveri, actually uh, listed six essential steps using which we can modernize current data architectures um, with data analytics and AI, which I have listed here. Um, the other aspect that I have listed is like um, our data architecture should support both on-premise data and the cloud data needs, so it should be hybrid. Um, and the cost factor is, um, I think, is there for a long time. So we have to balance the cost and the simplicity within these data architectures. And in terms of data storage, is because um, scalability is, I think, uh, is a problem for most of the organizations. So um, we can adopt a new technologies such as data lakes or data lake houses to address the um, uh, to to address the scalability needs actually. Now from where from here is, um, uh, what's next from here is like, the, the guides are the checklist that we have developed uh, the starting points and we are welcoming our community to have a look at on this checklist and guides for com continuous improvements. And we will regularly review and update these checklists so that we, we will remain, um, we can remain updated with the evolving data landscapes or the evolving data um, landscape um, challenges. So if I will summarize these uh, in five key points, um, uh, the conclusion is that we can prioritize data quality in data architectures. Um, and by doing this, we can avoid the um, negative effects or domino effects um, within the data architecture so that it, the, the data-driven solutions should lead to this success, not to the disaster. 
nowadays i think it's um the important thing is it's not just about defense algorithms and impressive reports i think it's all it's also about building trust through reliable and accurate insights and to develop these i think uh, data quality is one of the important factor and in terms of this checklist, um, these checklists can definitely improve the data quality, but it's not a magic bullet actually. Um, a checklist basically ensures that the key aspects and the key ingredients of the data architectures are in place and considered, and they're um, addressed in a systematic manner. And um, by, by including these kind of checklist, um, um, organizations can improve and maintain their existing architectures and also the key components such as the data quality. Um, the last one, I think, which is important one is like every organization has unique architecture that basically reflects their infrastructure, their culture and their business requirements. Um, however, I think in every architecture, there are key components are the key elements that we actually try to capture in the develop um, checklist actually. So these are some of the highlights from my side. So thank you once again for um, listening. And um, yeah, that's it from my side.